let's let's uh, let's uh, move to the to the next question. Um, when Ron Paul ran for president, it's a long time ago. He called for removal of the Fed. If the Fed were removed, what impact would this have on the United States? Rick, I, I'll yeah. let, I'll, I'd like for Rick to start with this. That's fine. Sure. Um, I have a, again, I'm a student of history. I believe in historical examination as a clue to how to solve our problems now. The history of capitalism has been a history of the people who love it and celebrate it and the people who are critical of it, like all systems, nothing unique about it. But one of the things that the victims of capitalism and the critics have often done, which I think to be a mistake, a distraction, have been to focus on the financial end of the system, not to see it as a whole system of production and distribution of uh, goods and services and money and debt and, and all the different things that make it up. And they focus their criticism not on the totality, the basic structures of it, but on one wing of it, as if this one wing pollutes all the rest. And if you can only fix that one wing, well, then everything else will work. So I am not sympathetic for that reason to the critiques of the Fed. I find the blaming of the Fed a, a mistake, missing the much more important parts of the economy. The Fed plays an important role. There's no debate about that. It controls the money supply. It is a mode of governmental intervention, which libertarians foam at the mouth about, as they should, since it violates most of their premises. Uh, but in any case, it, it is an institution which in other countries is called the bank of that country. It's a central bank. Uh, our peculiar history, we can't call it a central bank, but that's what it is. Central banks are parts of, accoutrements of, interveners for particularly dealing with the instabilities that haunt capitalism. But as the core problem, it, you know, let's put it this way. We didn't have a central bank for a while. That's part of the history of why it's called the Fed. And when we didn't, you can think of it as an experiment. What would you do if you didn't have, if you're a modern capitalist country, the 19th century, you didn't have a central bank. What you had was lots of little banks, as we had in our colonial period, um, giving IOUs, which function as money. That, that was a system of such chaos, such corruption, such that by consensus of almost everyone, this had to stop. Private management of money was a disaster. Privatizing that system, was, that's why we have a Federal Reserve. To see that the Federal Reserve is a mixed bag, and then to conclude from that, we must go back my goodness, that would be like in the Soviet Union, being critical of the Soviet Union, thinking the only alternative is to go back to capitalism and ending up with what you have now. Thank you, Rick. Glenn? I don't have anything to add. Okay. Do you agree? With uh, I agree that we need the Federal Reserve. I, I agree that autonomous money-making uh, uh, entities uh, writing pieces of paper throughout the country is a, a formula for financial disaster. I agree that the financial crisis of 2007, 2008 uh, was managed at the end, avoiding the worst disasters in part because of the adroit deployment of the resources of the Fed. I agree that we're in the midst of a horrible inflation right now and the Federal Reserve Bank and its uh, efforts to uh, fight that inflation is an important part, not the only part, but an important part of an effective response to it. I think the idea of getting rid of the Fed is ridiculous. I don't know where Ron Paul comes from with that, except maybe some libertarian ideology. So I agree with Rick, and I'm not going to go through the history lesson that he did. I don't have anything to add. Could I add one point about the Fed? Sure, please. Um, I'm struck, again as a historian, that the Fed that we have with its problems is doing something which, frankly, I don't understand, or if I let myself go there, I might even come to some sort of conspiratorial analysis, which I normally don't like and want. I know of two cases in the American, modern American history where we've had a serious inflation problem where it was handled without any use of rising interest rates. I would advocate for them, but that's not my point. My point is, why do we have a Federal Reserve that acts and speaks 
as though the only, the one, the right one is to raise interest rates. Even when Mr. Powell admits the pain of unemployment that that is going to cause and has already begun to. In 1971, Richard Nixon imposes a wage price freeze. It's a control against an inflation, worse then than the one we have now. It worked like a charm. It had its problems. All anti-inflationary policies have problems. But why are we not discussing what a conservative Republican president did and did successfully? Here's a second example. Early 1940s, Franklin Roosevelt, the Democratic president, he's about to enter a war where vast amounts of resources are going to produce for a war. Those resources don't produce consumer goods anymore, which means we're about to have a self-generated shortage of consumer goods. If we allow markets to delegate how this works out, the prices are going to be bid up and the milk is going to go to the rich people and not to the people with a lot of kids. So we don't have it. My teachers advised Mr. Uh, uh, Roosevelt, substitute, shut the market down, which he did, and substitute a, a rationing system, which he did. And he handed out ration books and stamps to people. And that's how they got gas, coffee, meat, sugar, and a whole lot of other things. That was to stop an inflation. Why are we not discussing the pros and cons of rationing, wage price freeze? Why do we have a Fed whose ideological insistence on only one policy makes you wonder what that's about? And they Let's are all here. specialists. Uh, Thank you. you know, wage and price controls and rationing? Yes. Of course, that would be the socialist prescription. That's the road to serfdom. That's the road to empty supermarket shelves. The price system needs to have the flexibility to send the signals about relative costs and benefits. You don't freeze wages and prices. They're fighting inflation with unemployment because that's the only way it can be effectively fought. You, you, you don't solve the problem of supply chain uh, disruption uh, or of inflationary expectation by slapping on wage and price controls. All you do is throw sand into the gears of the well-functioning economy. You want to impoverish us. Well, Glenn, but isn't the the increasing of interest rates hurting yes. people right now? Yeah, yeah. It, it's called the uh, inflation unemployment trade-off. I'm sorry, but this is the real world that we live in. There really isn't any alternative to that, in my uh, opinion. I'm not alone in thinking this. I mean, Bill Baumel thought this. Uh, Bill Brainerd. These are people that Rick knows that yep. I'm talking about. James Tobin thought this. Bob Sola, that these are not right-wing uh, ideologues. These are people who spent a lifetime trying to understand exactly what's going on uh, with, in, in, uh, with inflation and unemployment and who understand that the only way to wring the inflationary expectations out is to allow the economy, the demand side of the economy, to cool down. I mean, we could talk about why we're into this inflation, and I'm not an expert on macroeconomics, not by any means. But wage freezes, price controls, and rationing are a disaster. And I hope that they never come to this country. And I'm, I'm very confident, given the political sensibilities of the people in both parties, that they will not. Would unemployment be considered a form of disaster for the unemployed? Yeah, unemployment is not good. Unemployment is bad. We live in the real world. There's no free lunch. Would you think that Mr. Th no, I mean, this point is really important to emphasize. We can't simply dictate what economic outcomes are going to be. We can't simply write statutes and change the underlying forces on the ground. There's no free lunch. I, I just wonder whether the logic here is, would then Mr. Nixon and Mr. Roosevelt have been advocates of a return to serfdom? I, I think the literature on the Nixon's price freeze is unambiguously negative in the economics profession. And I think Roosevelt faced a war emergency in which uh, he had to deal with shortages. So, so you got ration tickets. I'm not arguing that it's not only rich people who should be able to get to the surgeon or should be able to get a loaf of bread if there's not enough to go around. Poor people shouldn't have to uh, get to the back of the queue in an emergency situation. But that was an emergency situation. Yeah. Inflations, by definition, are emergency situations calling for unusual steps. You have liberals like Janet Yellen and, and even Mr. Powell advocating for the unemployment of, of large numbers of people rather than the price wage free. You, if you want to 
for example, Janet Yellen gives speeches, as does Powell, about the problem of unequal distribution of wealth. Okay, then don't have a wage price freeze. Have a price freeze. Leave the wages alone. That way they can rise. The prices can't. And that's how you redistribute wealth and income while you fight the inflation. What a wonderful twofer. No, not, that's I, how companies go bankrupt because they can't raise their prices to meet their costs. Wages are rising and prices are frozen and you end up with unemployment and no goods on the shelf. Right. You end up with the Soviet Union. Yeah. <laughs> well, okay. I'm not sure about that. But, yeah. Oh, uh, <laughs> it's all good. It's all good. I, I'm not... Count, no, By the way, you know. almost just footnote, almost every European country at one time or another has imposed wage price freezes. Nobody there ever argued that I'm aware of that this led to or had the consequences of producing Soviet Union. I invite the listener to look at what the American Economic Association surveys of members where they ask questions about what are your views about uh, wage and price controls and see what the profession says. Nine to one, they're gonna be against free price freezes as a response to infra inflation. Well, I agree. Huh? Just do your research. <laughs> the economics profession is not of two minds about what I'm saying right now. Having excluded the people who might disagree for 75 years, that shouldn't be too surprising. Okay. <laughs>